Welcome to WebRTC Live. In WebRTC Live, we cover the latest technical topics and business use cases for WebRTC and live video. As always, this episode is brought to you by WebRTC Ventures, leading integrators of WebRTC video into your custom application. Welcome back to WebRTC Live. I'm your host, Aaron Sign, founder and CEO of WebRTC Ventures. We are a custom design and development firm specializing in live video applications. We're here to help you take your video application live and learn more about us at webrtc.ventures. For today's episode of WebRTC Live, I'm very pleased to have Alan Quayle as our guest. Alan is founder of TadHack Global, the largest series of worldwide telecom hackathons with the goal of making programmable communications accessible to everyone. Our teams at WebRTC Ventures have participated a number of times, great events, highly recommend them. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Alan. Excellent, and thank you so much for uh, inviting me, uh, Aaron. Yep, you've participated and you've also run locations as well. That's so, right. Uh, absolutely, thank you for all your help and support over the years. No, absolutely, uh, really pleased uh, to have been part of it in the past. I know we have a team signing up for uh, the TadHack Global events in October as well. Why don't we start with uh, having you tell us a little bit about what's coming up in, in the next month? Absolutely. Let me just share my screen. So just uh, give me a sec sure. to uh, move over to and go to the TATAC site. So here we go. So uh, as I warned you, uh, Aaron, I could talk for ages about this. So <laughs> interrupt me when I'm getting really boring. So we have coming up on the 10th and the 11th of October, TATAC Global 2020. Now we have had quite a few before. So uh, we can see here <clears throat> since 2014, we've been uh, running these events. So as uh, Aaron mentioned, it's a global hackathon. We've got lots of locations uh, around the world. We've, the root of TATAC is all about programmable communications. But it's not just that. I mean, we've had supermarkets, Carrefour as a sponsor. We've had uh, Ethereum OS, Status as a sponsor. We've had IoT. We've got uh, this year a sponsor for uh, North America, Symbol AI, which is a uh, chatbot, a conversational agent. So we've had a whole range of different related technologies. Uh, and you know, the focus is all about helping people learn about these technologies and realize just how accessible they are. Now, yes, there's cash. Uh, it's not a pat in the pack. It's not a Google sticker or an Amazon sticker you get for basically doing a hack. We try to give people cold, hard cash. One of the reasons we do that is because we want to encourage everybody, not just you know, uh, young developers outside of school. Uh, we want people that you know are in full-time jobs that you know, winning. Let's say a uh, I don't know a Millennium Falcon drone would be nice, but actually having some cash means they can basically share that with their family. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we've always had as much cash as possible available to uh, the people taking part. Now, the global sponsors making this possible are. Simwood, Sangoma, Asterix, and Avaya. I'm going to jump into their resources in a little bit. I just want to sh give a special shout out to uh, Simwood. They were there at the start. I mean, after their experience uh, last year in being a sponsor, they were said, we're in for 2020. When COVID hit, they were like, nope, we've given you your commit, our, you know, uh, our commitment to you. We're going to be there for you. So it's been great. Uh, one of the advantages we've got with TADHack is we have been virtual from the get-go in that we've allowed remote entries. We might have a physical location, but people can take part remotely. So uh, we did our first remote only hackathon all the way back in uh, March of this year. Uh, that was uh, TADHack Mini Orlando. It was going to be just before Enterprise Connect, but as you would imagine, they weren't able to run, but we were like, hey, We've told everybody we're running. We're going to run no matter what. So we've already done one fully virtual. TADEC Global this year is a mix of both uh, in-person and virtual, mostly virtual uh, because of uh, COVID-19. But we still do have some in-person locations as well. I'll come back to the sponsors in a little bit. Uh, here are the locations. Uh, so let's just click on one. So we have uh, Berlin. 
So we'll just jump in, just take a little time. There you go. Uh, so we have Automat, Deutsche Telekom, and VoIP Labs <clears throat> to thank for making this possible. So you can see uh, some of the pictures there. Uh, we try to avoid having too many pictures of beers uh, in the pictures. Uh, here's the location. So this is going to be one of our locations that will be running in person, but will also accept remote entries. Now, this is a nice one because, of course, we've got a global sponsors to win prizes. You've got a hack on the uh, global sponsors, but we also have local sponsors as well. So this is a great opportunity uh, in Berlin to be able to hack on Hubram and, of course, mash it up with some of the other sponsors as well. And we have the schedule there. And then you just click on the developer resources. And this takes you to uh, the uh, global resources. I'll just click on Avaya because we did an update uh, yesterday. And we have, of course, Avaya OneCloud uh, CPaaS APIs. So uh, they were uh, available at Tadhack Mini Phoenix. Uh, which ran back at uh, the end of January, start of February. But we also have uh, some additional APIs, the Avaya Cloud Office APIs. So they're the Ring Central ones. So this is a great opportunity to learn not just about Avaya, but what Ring Central is doing as well. So I just sort of mentioned that to show you just the range of technologies that are available for you to uh, play with. Oh, and just to mention, we were at SimCon. Uh, back in early March before the lockdowns hit us. And uh, they awarded uh, the work that we've been doing with TATHACK a prize in terms of empowering the next generation. So thank you to everyone at uh, Simwood for your support uh, with that prize. So let me just jump back to all the locations. United Kingdom now is virtual only because uh, unfortunately, yeah, the second wave uh johannesburg south africa is our biggest location by far they're already at 220 registrations i mean other locations are doing well uh you know like um asia pacific is over 50 registrations Popaya in colombia similar number so you've got you know we're doing well on numbers. It's not going to be as big as uh, some of the uh, uh, years like 2017, 2018, but we're still, given the current situation, doing well. So what I'd say is if you're listening and you've not already re registered, please get involved. If none of these locations are close to you, do not worry. We have Global Remote. So from the comfort of your own home and wherever that home is, even if it's out of space, you can take part in Tad hack, so please register, and I'll just you know highlight two locations where we are suffering a little bit uh, in both the United Kingdom and also in uh, North America. No, normally we have no problems, massive registration numbers. There's a bit of a malaise because of second wave of COVID, and I think just the political situation going on in both those countries. So all I'd say is ignore all that crap, have a fun weekend on the 10, 11th. 10th and 11th of October, hacking with Tad Hack. So uh, just you know, to all the audience here, please sign up if you're in both of those countries or, to be honest, anywhere else. So that hopefully gives you a feel for, oh, one other thing I must mention. I forgot to do this. Uh, here's Chicago. Now, if you're hacking for Chicago, North America, you've got tons of toys to play with. We have not only have the global sponsors of Simwood, Sangoma, Avaya. We also have two location sponsors. So for Chicago, North America, the Symbol AI. Check those guys out. Really interesting conversational uh, agent technology and Intellipia. Intellipia were a sponsor for Tatak Mini Orlando, and they had great time uh, being a, a sponsor there. So they uh, joined us again, uh, even given the uh, COVID nineteen situation. So I just wanted to highlight uh, all those technologies. Again, just click on developer resources, and that will link to uh, all the pages where you can sign up to get access to the uh, accounts and play with the APIs. I'm not going to get into all the details on this. I just want to give a few highlights uh, of people who have taken part. So uh, Sasha, some of you might remember he used to work for Voxbone. He took part in a TAD hack in London. Uh, we ran that actually at a UCL facility. 
He discovered UC had some amazing master's courses. He went off and did a master's, leaving Voxbone. Uh, he took part in a second TAD hack in London uh, and did a really cool hack. Uh, I think this is the one here. It is uh, on uh, Tropo and Cisco, winning there. Uh, and guess what? He now works for uh, Cisco over in the Bay Area, which was his dream job. Uh, we've got many, many stories. I'll just show uh, Karel, founder of Voxist. He took part five years ago now in uh, Tatak Mini Paris. Uh, here you go. Here's the winners. I mean, we had many people taking part, as you can see in the pictures. Uh, just scroll down here. There you go. So there's Karel and some of his colleagues did a hack, and that gave him the confidence to go out and found Voxist. Now, Voxist has actually merged with Slatch, which is a really interesting uh, company. So again, it's great to see these stories of people doing hacks and then going off and founding companies. And I just want to also mention, here's the winner, uh, Jean-Luc. Uh, he uh, did a great hack on Circuit. Unfortunately, Circuit no longer exists anymore, but Jean-Luc founded a, only a month or two ago now, a company called Storylation. It's a social media company, uh, social network, sorry. Uh, and the focus is sharing inspiring stories about people you know. So it's rather than sharing, you know, I'm great, look at me. It's all about sharing stories about other people and why they're great. So it's a great concept. I'm there, a member. I've written a couple of uh, articles there. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, I, I'm not sure how successful it's going to be, but I don't care. Jean-Luc supported us and I'm there supporting uh, Jean-Luc with uh, Storylation. And there's lots and lots of other people. I mean, one of the things we try to do with TADHack is just to be open, fun, and accessible. And Genesis took part in a TADHack Mini Orlando. This was her first hackathon outside of university. And you know, it was just really nice to see people giving feedback around feeling comfortable and enjoying their experience. Oh, that's excellent, Alan. Yeah, yeah I can say as uh, having been a you know past participant and members of our team, it is a uh, it's it's definitely a great way to escape the world for a couple of days, which we could all use right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, uh, but you know it's a it is a really fun way to uh, get a chance to learn some other tools that you may or may not use normally. So for you know for our company. We, we build custom applications using a lot of these technologies for our clients regularly. But the great thing about being able to uh, have a couple of our developers go to go to some of these events, we've done them in person in Chicago before, yeah. Argentina, New York, or just remotely, uh, you know, this year, it's, it's a, you know, great chance for them to maybe use something that they haven't used before, do something really creative. Uh, get to know some people. And, you know, I'll say too, if, if, if there are any other companies out there sort of like us watching this, it's also a good way to just get some, uh, you know, some networking and some marketing experience too. We always make sure to do a blog post about our entries afterwards. Uh, and I've had some pretty uh, interesting sales calls come out of some of those blog posts before too. Uh, so they're, they're a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Great, great and event. the thing is you can, if you've got a project you're working on, uh, and it's not related in any way to you know the global sponsors. It doesn't matter. Mash it up with some right. of the global sponsors. You're promoting your project. You're promoting something you care about. And you know, it may be not you know a, a significant piece of the overall project, but it doesn't matter. It's a great showcase. Right. Because part of what we're doing is showcasing all the cool stuff people uh, have been involved in. Uh, for example. We had a couple of years ago, I mentioned um, Status, and Ethereum OS was one of the sponsors. Wow. And in Tadhack uh, Papaya in Colombia, they had an amazing hack they created. Uh, again, decentralized uh, sharing of, if you're at protests, what the cops are getting up to. So it, you know, it was the students who'd done it, and they'd been involved in quite a few protests. So for them, this was something that they saw significant value and importance. And that's a yeah. great thing. It was a technology they hadn't thought about or looked at. And they look, you know, and, and part of what we do with TED Hack is it, it is a little different to a lot of hackathons. A lot of hackathons are, here's the exercise, do the exercise, well done, here's your sticker. <laughs> what we do is, well, here's the sponsor's technologies, but we want you to think about problems you see in your home, work, community.
daily life. And physiologists could help solve them. So very much what we're trying to do is create you know real world solutions to real world problems. And that's one of the nice things that we've seen time and time again out of every year. Hacks become real deployed services. And in some cases, companies, uh, if I think back to our first TAD hack in 2014, a company was founded out of that. They were one of the runners up in Sri Lanka and uh, Exogene. And uh, um, they've been successful. They're still running today, creating many more innovations. So it's great to see all these stories and the success that we've had in just helping people get out, use programmable telecoms. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think a, a lot of the interesting ones I've seen over the years at Hack 2 are the ones that are kind of like the 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 social, uh, you know, the protest application that you mentioned. Yeah, denunciation. Yeah. You know, maybe their employer, you know, there may not be a, a sort of business bottom line to it, not something they would get to do at work. <laughs> Yeah, but, but really important, um, and uh, and that's kind of related too to something you've often talked about over the years, which is kind of the democratization of telecoms in general. And I know that you know making that accessible to to everyone is is been a, a driving passion for you. Um, so I'd, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about that, and also specifically why for today you said accessible telecom development for. Almost. <laughs> you didn't quite say everyone today. So, so I'd yeah. love to hear you kind of uh, talk a little bit about that. The, yeah. Uh, and that, I think, is, it's an important trend that we're seeing. Uh, I mean, we've seen announcements from Amazon, from Google, in getting to almost no code. Because it's all about accessibility of technology. 20 years ago, telecoms was held in a little ivory tower, you know, called the telecoms industry. And there were the telcos and their few vendors, and it was all very complex. And no UITF, you can't do voice coding. Only we know voice, you know, Opus appeared. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was closed, and there were only like tens of thousands, maybe a few hundred thousand people that could do stuff with it. Telcos had a go at trying to open APIs, but legacy, you know, innovators dilemma basically, you know, resulted in what we would expect. But then a cater of companies came out and webified communications. Uh, you know, some have been inordinately successful, uh, but they made those APIs easy for any web developer. So now, rather than it being maybe a few hundred thousand, we're talking about tens to 100 million people can do stuff to solve problems using programmable communications. And what I'm seeing now, I mentioned you know, Google's initiatives and Amazon, but also many of the CPaaS companies are also having simple GUI tools so that you can now, as a product manager, as just somebody you know in a CIO organization that's not a coder or maybe did some coding you know quite a way time ago, but is smart enough to be able to use the drop and drag tools to be able to solve simple problems like you know you're a company that you know expenses aren't getting approved fast enough and it's causing employee frustration. Well, you can now very easily take the expense tool and with a simple basically integration be able to uh, you know using drag and drop you don't have to be you know pay, you know have to get a project get coders time and you know specs and all the rest you just simply hey as soon as the uh, you know expense is submitted there's an sms to the approving manager you need to approve it next day there's an sms sms to the approving manager you need to approve it and it just keeps blasting until it gets approved their employee they have no choice they have to take that sms you know uh, that's a simple example of how you know anybody nearly anybody within the organization can solve these problems and we've had people at tatac who are like you know early teens into their 70s taking part and some are there just to learn to experience to realize there's no reason to be scared because it is when you say hackathon you think there's going to be all these big beardy sort of developers like us you know you know it's not honestly you know there's a whole variety of people there's people who have no coding experience whatsoever they're a part of the team and guess what they're creating a really clear you know explanation of the problem of how 
what's being demonstrated to them, and creating a great pitch. So diverse teams always, hands down, create the best pitches and generally win prizes. So diversity wins time and time again. Yeah, definitely. I think it's always good to, um, uh, you certainly can submit a hack as an individual, but whenever you can do it as part of a team, you know, it's going to be a better experience for you and a, a better deliverable too. Exactly. So, so yeah, you, um, I, I think one of the great things about the TAD hacks is that you have those cash prizes. Uh, so for those who uh, are thinking how they can, how they can get their hands on, on some portion of that cash prize, what are the tips that you have for the, the most successful hacks, the best presentations? What yeah. are the things that you've seen? I mean, if you, I mean, it's okay to hack individually. You don't need to have a team. Sure. Uh, we've had lots of winners that are just individuals. Uh, I remember at one t uh, at our first ever Tadak Mini Orlando just before uh, Enterprise Connect, we had uh, a guy. He was in the CIO group within Medtronic, which is a Cisco house, and uh, he was uh, hacking on Ring Central. And it was a great hack, and he won the Ring Central Prize. The Cisco salespeople were apoplectic. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> but I, he just came in, and he was like, do I need to be part of a team? I said, look, it's up to you. If you've got an idea and you think you can put something together, do it. You know, I mean, they're there to help you. The, you know, the, the sponsors want you to be successful. Others, where you have a more diverse team, bring different skills, because uh, the key is you're judged on the pitch, not on your code, not on you know basically sort of you uh, how how much you've got working. It's on the pitch in terms of the problem solution and the bit that you've got working. And the th great thing is the sponsors know because they've seen what API access you've been doing, how you've been questioning them. So they know how much is real and or not. So very much. The pitch, that five minutes where you come in and explain is key. And having a diverse team is great. I would say the third piece is something you care about. And that's why we say look at problems in your home, your work, your community life. Because if you care about solving that problem, it comes through time and time again in the energy and excitement you have uh, in the pitch. Oh, that's great. Yeah, totally agree. That matches our experience as well. Um, when when we've had winning hacks, and you know, making sure you put some good time into that presentation, use multiple sponsors when you can. Mash, you know, mash up, mash up, mash up, mash up. Mash them all together. Go for it. And you know, the the sponsors are all known in advance, right? We've we've just seen them here, so yeah. I think it's great too to take a little time before the hackathon get to know their APIs a little bit before the hackathon if you can. Yeah. Make sure you take advantage of, uh, you know, I think you usually have like a Slack channel with sponsors at the event. So take advantage of that to ask them questions during the hackathon. But obviously the more you can experiment with their APIs prior to the hackathon, the more that'll generate ideas for you and, and uh, you know, help you out during the weekend too. Exactly. I mean, I'll just share on the screen, uh, just, just give me a sec. Uh, share. We do use because uh, we believe in using all the cool tools. Uh, hopefully, you can see it. We have uh, tadhack uh, .riot .im, So we use Element, and we have rooms for each of the locations. We have a general room. You can see there's conversations going on in there because people are looking at the resources already. So uh, I just mentioned that to uh, say we used to use Slack, but you know, they're a horrible commercial organization that keeps wanting money from me to be able to do anything useful with the tool. So we're very grateful that Matrix hosts, uh, you know, uh, tadhack.riot.im, and that's what we use. We'll also be using Simwood Meet for video collaboration. It's a great tool. It's so easy now to live stream a video collaboration because you just go to YouTube, you grab the code, you know, the key, you pop it into basically, a, a, you know, uh, the uh, Simwood Meet tool and your conference is live streaming. I remember, I mean, I've been using YouTube live streaming for like eight, nine years. It's been a pain in, in the ass for so many of those years. Now it's just, you know, cut and paste and you're all running. So it's so much easier now to share that. So we'll have video collaboration. We'll have chat. 
And also the sponsors will have their own channels as well. So you can go in and have detailed in-depth discussions with the sponsors to be able to get and in the sponsors resources, it's all listed out where to go. Uh, in some have got Slack channels, some are using, uh, you know, uh, Riot. So, uh, well, you know, you'll get through no matter what. Oh, that's great that you're using Riot and and uh, Matrix is one of the sponsors we've used before in our hacks. Uh, definitely cool applications. So that's excellent. Um, so yeah, I want to ask you too. Like you said in in uh, kind of your beginning intro, you've been doing virtual events and hybrid virtual and in person events long before the pandemic made it a requirement for so many people. So there's a lot of people coming up to speed this year on what really you've developed a lot of expertise in. I'm curious if you have any quick tips for uh, any of our viewers who are considering, you know, their own, taking their own events virtual for the first time. What have you learned, technical or otherwise? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's a small organization and we don't work with many big brands, I know there's a big brand uh, on one of the sponsors, but they're paying the same as all the little brands. Um, you know, we try to use free stuff as much as possible. Free is good. Uh, so <clears throat> I'd say if you're doing it, you know, initially free or low cost, uh, with an event now with a hackathon, I'll be honest. And with, a, 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 you know, like we do Tad summit, which is a sister event, and that's a conference focused on programmable, uh, communications, meeting people, you know, in the real world is, you know, that's the best thing. It's a pale imitation when you're doing a conference and it's virtual. It just doesn't compare. Now, one of the things I've done with Tad Summit, you know, because when we're all working for home, we're busy, you know? I mean, we have this slotted in, you know, but it's it's only like half an hour or so. So, you know, it's, it's a lot easier. But if it's like an event where it's from nine through to 12 and then two through till five, that's a big ask in my time during the day when I've got all the day-to-day -day work going as well. I'm not at your event, so I'm trapped there, so I'm going to listen. So one of the things I did with Ted Summit is, right, you know, if I can't get people together, all my job is to ensure that I bring together a great agenda and help distribute people's knowledge, learning, and ideas as widely as possible. So what we do is actually you know, unique in you know, because everybody's trying to copy doing a virtual event, you know, a real event virtually. I think that might work for some audiences, but you know, for a lot of people, it's you know, we just publish each presentation through a month. So we did Tad Hack, uh, Tad Summit, sorry, Asia in May. Every day we released a new presentation. Uh, we, you know, we promote it on social media, so on Twitter, LinkedIn, and you know, through the day you can look and go, oh, you know, that's interesting. Or nah, can't be bothered with that one. Or if you're really busy that week, come the weekend, you can have a look through and see what you've missed. Uh, and then, so it's more respectful of people's time. We're not asking you to be there at a specific time when, shit, I really need to get that email out to that customer or I need to get that contract signed or, you know, all the other stuff that happens with work from home. So we've actually done something that, you know, isn't replicating in a virtual environment what happens in real. We recognize that real is unique. Uh, and you, you can't replicate it virtually easily. So uh, we've done something almost the antithesis, which is we're just going to distribute content for an event and people will look at it because we've you know, crafted a range of insight that you know, attracts people's attention through that month in a respectful way when they have a little bit of time. Uh, now, you know, as you said, we've always had hybrid in there because people, it's expensive to travel. You know, people can't be in a particular location or, you know, they're busy. So what we've always done is allowed for those that can view in real time, we've, you know, we've always streamed live uh, and taken questions uh, during the live streaming. You don't get tend to get that many questions during live streaming because, you know, people are just checking in. And we've always recorded all the content and made it easy to access and all tagged and easy to discover and writing web blogs about it. Because so many events, it's like, thank you and goodbye, we're done, woohoo, we got the money in the bank, that's it, over, thank you and good night. When actually, that's just the beginning. Because part of it is helping people discover 
all the learning, all the interesting ideas. And so many events don't do that. So that's part of what we try to do with both TED Hack and TED Summit. And that's and you can see it in our views. You know, we're a weird, geeky little niche in programmable communications. Yet, you know, for like from uh, three times, which, you know, I mean, it's not Psy, you know, uh, type of pop video, which is billions of views, but it's still good for our niche. That's great. No, I appreciate it, Alan. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's wrap up with just a couple of reminders of timing and how people can register. Um, I'm going to give a quick plug first for the uh, other thing going on in Chicago right after your hackathon. So always timed with the TAD Hack in Chicago, we have the uh, Illinois Institute of Technology's Real-Time Communications Conference. You can learn more about that at rtc-conference.com. We've got a great set of speakers for the following week after the TAD Hack around WebRTC. There are other tracks as well. I'm chairing the WebRTC track. Um, Alan will be talking about some of the TAD Hack winners. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and um, so, yeah, great opportunity. And that'll all be free content over the course of a few days during that week. And uh, so check that out. You can register for free now at rtc-conference.com. Uh, so, Alan, tell us again uh, for our viewers, how do they sign up for the TAD Hack? What do they need to do right after this webinar? Absolutely. So uh, let me just go back to the uh, TAD Hack site. Uh, and uh, it's really simple. Here it is. Just go to tadhack.com. Uh, and then you scroll down. And here are the locations. And say uh, you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the Chicago North America. You just click on that. Uh, that shows you basically there is a physical location, but you can take part remotely as well. And here it is. You just click on register. So uh, that takes you to the registration, and then you'll get an email. And then closer to the event, you'll get all the uh, stuff in terms of you know, how to submit remotely or to uh, take part uh, in the real world. And the key here is because we're accepting hacks remotely across all locations, you don't have to hack over the weekend of the 10th and the 11th of October. You can start now. In fact, some people are starting now. They're just doing, you know, like a few sort of hours here and there because they know during that weekend they can't devote a whole weekend to hacking. So you can start now, start playing with the resources, and then uh, from that you can uh, you know, get something together so that you're not as rushed during the uh, TATAC weekend. So we're a lot more flexible because of the uh, situation. Uh, that that sounds great. This is definitely a year with a lot of flexibility required, but I'm really happy to see the Tad Hack events continuing through it. Um, a lot of you know, just a lot of great great experience, great content for everybody attending. So so definitely want to encourage all of our viewers to go check it out. Uh, TadHack.com and the RTC conference at rtc-conference.com. You can also follow us at. Uh, WebRTC Ventures on Twitter to find out more episodes like this coming up. Uh, in October, we will have Sean Dubois from Pionly talking uh, with us about WebRTC for the Curious. So another great opportunity to learn more about WebRTC and another great community um, uh, learning opportunity there uh, as well. So Alan, thanks again for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. And uh, uh, look forward to speaking with you. Unfortunately, not in Chicago together this year, hopefully next year, but uh, certainly at the events. Uh, so thanks for your time, Alan, today. And thank you for the invitation, Aaron. Take care. All right. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, again, learn more at WeberTC.Ventures or at WeberTC Ventures on Twitter. Let's make it live. Thanks for joining us for WebRTC Live. Visit our website at webrtc.ventures to learn more about our custom design and development services and to learn more about upcoming episodes of WebRTC Live.